Hey everyone, and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Classic Season of Discovery video. Today's video is going to be my 7 tips and tricks on how I'm able to do the Alderman Hunter Farm on my level 40 undergeared hunter. Real quick, and before I begin, I just want to give a big thank you to everyone that's liked and subscribed to my channel. I just reached over 150 subscribers. My next goal is going to be 250, so if you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Now let's get into it. Tip number one is strafing. Make sure that your A and D keys are bound to strafe left and strafe right. A big part of this farm is strafing left and right. Make sure that if you see in your movement key buttons that it's not turn left and turn right. Strafing left and right means that when you press your A or D key, your character is going to run in that direction rather than just pivoting on a single point turning in that direction. This is one of the very basic key components to doing this farm. I'm sure most of you already do this, but just in case, this one's for the beginners. Tip number two is going to be binding your pet abilities. You can bind all of your pet's abilities to their own key. So in my case, I like to bind my pet's stealth to E and my pet's sprint to six. After I pass the dwarfs at the beginning, I like to press my stealth ability key bind so I can run faster. And then once I get aggro, I press sprint. Your pet abilities will be found in the action bar drop down window if you scroll down. Tip number three is going to be trap at cursor macros. I'll have these macros linked down in the description below. And what they do is whenever you press your trap keybind, instead of having to press it once to activate it and then again to set the trap, all you have to do is press the key once and it will place the trap wherever your cursor is. Tip number four is toggling aspects. I think while you're beginning to do this farm, the best thing you can do is just stay in Aspect of the Viper. That way you don't have to worry about your mana at all. One less thing to think about, it's going to be a little bit less DPS, but it allows you to focus on the pack of mobs in front of you. Once you start to get a little bit more comfortable with the farm, then you can start toggling the aspects. When your mana is low, you're going to go to Aspect of the Viper to get mana back up to full. And then once you're full on mana, you're going to go Aspect of the Hawk to get more ranged attack power. Tip number 5 is going to be a Caster Mob Weak Aura. This weak aura is something that I got from Frost Adamus' Alderman video. It's one of the major things you're going to need to focus on, as these are the mobs that you want to kill first. Watching the weak aura cast bar lets me know when I need to strafe out of line of sight of the casters. Besides watching the ball of mobs walking towards you, this is the second most important thing I found I need to keep track of to do this farm. A link to this weak aura will also be posted down in the description below. Tip number 6 is an add-on I've installed called GSE. It's an advanced macro compiler. This add-on allows me to make a macro, kind of like a cast sequence macro, but it's a little bit better as it doesn't get hung up on itself. As you can see, I have one button here that's rotating through my three abilities that I use during this farm. In the add-on interface, I've made a macro where I've just added the abilities that I want it to scroll through. I'm not 100% sure how to use this add-on, I've just cobbled this together and it seems to work. It's not super necessary and you don't need it, but it's one of those things that when you have it, it just makes it a lot easier. 
after I made the macro, I added it to my keybinds, so now all I have to do is spam the one key that it's bound to. Tip number 7 is a mouse macro and it's a little bit controversial. Most modern day gaming mice come with their own software. In my case, I have a Razer gaming mouse and if I open up their options menu, I can toggle an ability called Turbo, which when I hold a key down, whichever one I bind it to, will automatically spam that button for me. This paired with the GSE add-on means that the macro I've made, I just have to hold that key down on my mouse and I don't have to spam it over and over again. The mouse macro will do that for me. Automation like this is probably not allowed, which is why it's controversial. So use this at your own risk or don't use it at all and just spam the key. It's easy enough. I hope you guys found some of these beginner tips and tricks useful while you're doing your Hunter Alderman farm. That's all I have for you today and I'll see you in the next one.